Now the Nikon 18 to 140 millimeter DX lens is a great lens, but what is the best aperture to use or f-stop to use when you're using the Nikon 18 to 140 lens? It really depends on your focal length, whether you're shooting at 18 mil, whether you're shooting at 35 mil, whether you're shooting at 70 mil, whether you're shooting at 140 mils, because if you're far from a subject and you haven't zoomed in and you're trying to see how sharp it is at 18 or let's say 35 mil, there is going to be a difference in how sharp the image looks like because you are much further away from your subject. Today, I want to show you just in a couple of simple steps what the best aperture would be for a given focal length. Now we're going to do this test two ways. And before we get started, my name's Charles. Welcome to my YouTube channel. You can see it's not a very bright day. I'm actually on my veranda. It's been raining for over a week and a half. And I'm going to show you, look at the picture here, I've set up my cordless drill and that is going to be our test subject. And we're going to move my camera three times. I'm using my Nikon D500, the Nikon 18 to 140mm lens. And we're going to test this lens at f5.6, at f8, at f11, at f16 and at f22. Now I know, as soon as you're saying like f22, Charles, that is way over what you should use this lens for. Well, that's right, but I'm going to show you how soft the images can get when you're using an aperture like this. But I've had people emailing me and say like, I've really heard you say to use f5.6 or f16. You normally talk about f8 or f11. Well, normally because that is, I found, the sweet spot. But I want to show you that that sweet spot can change depending on your focal length and depending on how far away from the subject you are. The first photos we're going to take of this cordless drill is at 140 mils. All these images are taken in JPEG. They're not in RAW. They're straight off the camera. Let's start off. So we're at f5.6. My ISO is at 200. It's a bit of a drab day. I've lit up the torch a little bit, so I'm not using a too slow shutter speed. Let's get going. First one here, f5.6. We're at 1 30th of a second, and I'm using the LCD viewfinder to see my correct exposure, and it's telling me 1 30th of a second. I'm on a two second time delay, so there's no shake in the camera, and I've focused right on where the trigger is, because that's right in the center. To keep this test accurate, our focus point will be the same, whether I'm here at 140 mils, whether I've moved the camera, so I'm at 70 mils, or whether I'm right up at 35 mils. So bear that in mind as we do the test. Now, we go to F8, F11, F16, F22. Now we're going to review these images at the end of the test. Now let's zoom out to 70 mils. This is the only time that I'm going to do this. The rest of the time I'm just going to be at a set distance. We're going to zoom out to 70 mils. We'll come back to f5.6. Focus back on our target. We have to refocus every time we adjust our focal length. That's f5.6, f8, f11, f16, f22. Now Let's move closer in so that at 70 mils, we are filling the frame again. So now we've moved closer in. You can see we're filling the frame at 70 mils. So now we start back off at f5.6, f8. Now the reason I'm using f5.6, f8, f11, f16, f22 is because they are full f-stops. If you're using a film camera, you would not have f6.3, f10, f14, f5. So this is why I'm using f5.6, f8, f11, f16, f22, because they are full stops. Anything in between is just half or third stops. So now we're at f11, f16, f22. Now we're at 35 mils and we're only about 60 centimeters away from our subject. Normally, you mightn't be this close. I'm showing you this, that I'm moving closer, because remember when we were at 140 mils far away and we zoomed in, our sharpness when we cropped in to 35 mils was much different, and it's going to be different to when we're this close. This is the downside of having just a kit lens. But if you were shooting at 35 mils and your subject was, let's say, 10, 15 meters away, 
and you pixel peeped and you cropped in that much, of course you're going to see some softness in your image, but you're not expecting to pixel peep. You're looking at your whole subject of how sharp the image is as a whole, zooming in at let's say just 100%. But if you zoom in at 200 or 300 percent, you're going to see that it's not as sharp as what you're expecting. But your expectations are beyond the realms of a kit lens. So let's start. 35 mils f5.6. Go to f8, f11, f16, f22. Now we'll go into my office and we'll download the photos and we'll review them on my computer. We'll see the differences between f5.6, f8, f11, f16, f22 at different focal lengths and at different focal distances. So now let's take a look at these photos. And the first ones were at 140 mils from f5.6 to f22. So this is our first image at 140 mils f5.6. Although the image looks fairly sharp, it's not that sharp. Now we're going up to f8, gets a little bit sharper, and even though I said that I'd focused on the trigger, I focused on the trigger because that was my center point. But the best part here is to look at the lettering here and also at the grip here on the drill. Now at F11, now at F16, now at F22. It's very hard to see but look at F22 here. The lettering is getting a bit soft, especially here where it says drill driver, 10 mils. Look at the lettering, quite soft. We go back to F16, a little bit sharper. F11, very sharp. F8, we're just going back down again. So you can see that at 140 mils, the sweet spot in this lens is 11 mils, but there's very little difference between F8 and F11, but F11 is definitely the sharpest image here. Now the next set of images, I didn't move my camera. I was at 140 mils and I zoomed out to 70 mils. And like I said at the start, to keep all the images the same, I cropped in. And there lies the matter because cropping in is like pixel peeping. So I cropped in from what something should have been 140 mils down to 70. Doing that magnified my image. And this is the same as pixel peeping. Even though the images were in focus, you will see that the focus is soft. It's not the camera's fault, it's us, it's me, because I've zoomed in too much. I've cropped my image too much. I wanna show you what it looks like at 70 mils without cropping. So this is what the image looked like at F8 without any crop. It's still quite sharp. This is F11. You'd say like, well, I can't see too much difference. Now let's take a closer look. This is cropped in to make it the same as the first images at 140 mils at f5.6. Look at the writing here, it is so soft. And this is why you shouldn't crop your images too much. If you're wanting to get closer, then use your feet. Like I did the next time, I moved in closer at 70 mils and my images were sharp and I'll show you that. But look, this is f5.6. This is F8, slightly sharper. This is F11, F16, F22. It's just blurred. It's not the camera's fault, my fault. Let's look at the next images, which I moved the camera to 70 mils. So these images are the images that I moved my whole setup closer so that I filled the frame at 70 mils. And look at that, F5.6 nice and sharp. F8, slightly sharper. F11, but what's going on here? At F11, it's slightly soft. Remember 140 mils, F11 was the sharpest. F8 was just a little bit off. Now, at F8, it's the sharpest point. F11, slightly duller. F16, a little bit more dull. F22, look at it, it is so soft. And that's why I was saying like, we shouldn't push this lens higher than F11. The only time that I would advise to take this lens to F16 or to F22 is if you didn't have an ND filter on and you were trying to slow water movement down. That is the only reason that you would take this lens to this aperture, to this f-stop. Once you go over F11 and you're stopping it down, F13, F14, F16, you're going to end up with slightly softer images. 
stay at f11 at its maximum. We're at 35 mils f5.6 and you can see that it's slightly soft. At f8 the sharpness has increased a little bit. f11 we're getting sharper but we're splitting hairs here between f8 and f11 but f11 is still just that little bit sharper and if you're wanting the sharpest images you have to choose the best f-stop and this is the whole point of this video to show you the best aperture the best f-stop at a certain focal length now we're at f16 you can see we're tapering down now slightly softer f22 it's softer still so i hope you can see that depending on the focal length that you use that the aperture the sweet spot in your lens might change because this is just a kit lens so for me at 35 mils my sweet spot was between f8 and f11 most photographers will say their lens has a sweet spot whether it's a prime lens whether it's a zoom lens all lenses have a sweet spot and the sweet spot is where it is the sharpest at 35 mils the sweet spot for this lens was between f8 and f11 on your lens at 140 mils maybe the sweet spot is f8 on mine it was f11 these are kit lenses they're churned out by the thousands now i've only used 140 mils 70 mils and 35 mils i didn't want this video to be too long I just split from 140 down to 70, 70 down to 35, and we end up with three sets of images. You could do the same thing at home, but instead of going to from 140 down to 70, you could go from 140, 120, 100, so on, until you get to 18 mil. But keeping your subject at the same focal length, you have to fill the frame. If you were using for example a drill like this you would have to make sure that the drill stayed the same it still filled the same amount of frame as you moved in so at 18 mils you might be very close and that's the only way that you can correctly say well at 18 mils this is the f-stop that i need to use if you found value in this video give me a big thumbs up stay safe enjoy photography enjoy using your nikon 18 to 140 millimeter lens and i'll see you next time